Welcome back. Uh, continuing to cover our uh, lead story today, Dow still in a free fall for most of the week this week. Uh, doesn't look like there's any end in sight. It is month end, and uh, that's a tough time when it's month end because a lot of portfolio managers, institutional money managers, they got to uh, clean up their portfolio for month end. So uh, people may be trying to get into cash here in case there's a big collapse on Monday may take some lumps and take their losses for the month of February, and when we wake up on Sunday, it's going to be March. And uh, that could lead to some tremendous selling into the close. I personally would like to see some uh, buying into the close, but uh, it's scary out there, folks. And uh, if you got your portfolio set up the right way, you've invested for the long term, you've put together a diversified portfolio that's not concentrated in one area, you should be able to be resistant to having to react with, to these fear, fright, and hysteria things. But if you have been dabbling around in your portfolio and freeing up some cash, as I've been asking you to think about doing, uh, if it continues to sell into the close here, and we wake up on Monday morning down a couple thousand, looking at 22,000, uh, you may want to think about then deploying some of that cash. And uh, I personally, you know me, I'm sitting here with my uh, Lysol dual action wipes. I'm wiping everything down. I'm dabbing myself with it if I have to. It's fighting off. I'm having a corona a day also. That's been working for me. I don't have the coronavirus yet. So uh, Lysol and corona beer may be something good for you. But uh, I'm no doctor. But joining me right now, a real doctor, Dr. Stephen Greer, founder and CEO of the Quality of Life Clinic. Doc, thanks for uh, joining us today on short notice. A lot of craziness going on out there. I'm not buying into it fully, but it does seem to be spreading. What do we need to know? Um, it's complete nonsense. Just breaking right now, the New England Journal has the actual death rates from China from coronavirus is 1.6 percent. That's less than your run of the mill flu influenza. This is not SARS. This is not Zika. This is not Ebola. This is nonsense. So uh, buy stocks. <laughs> now, just to let you know, uh, for 20 years as a Wall Street analyst, I, I advised the entire corporation of Merrill Lynch and so forth and Steve Cohen's hedge funds every time one of these viral epidemics came by. And uh, that's, that's my background there. So I've, I've been right on these things. So, Doc, um, I appreciate that. And uh, I was covering in my lead today uh, this story from a couple of weeks back that a professor from Harvard University, guy who ran the, the uh, Department of Chemistry and Chemical Biology, was apparently um, participating in this plan with the University of Wuhan, this thing called the Thousand Talents Program, where the University of Wuhan was paying him personally 50 grand a month to work on certain stuff, and a couple of people he, couple people he was working with um, were arrested trying to smuggle some vials. There's this Dean Koontz thriller out there, Eyes of Darkness, from 1981, talking about this Wuhan 400, a man-made strain. Could any of this be part of a propaganda campaign by China to, to muddy up the waters on what's really going on with their economy? Could this be man-made, possibly? Uh well, I don't know about the man-made part, but everything else you said is fact. Yes, there was a Harvard head of chem. Well, there was also a head of chemistry arrested for espionage. He was uh, working with the Chinese, not telling people. So, yeah, that's happening all over academia. Uh, uh, there's too many to count. So, um, yeah. So, yeah, my question is, um, I've been saying for the last couple of months that China's economy is a lot worse than they're telling everyone. Um, they recently came out and lowered their bank reserves from 20% to 10%. Most people here in the U.S. don't realize, because our banks aren't technically nationalized, that when they lower those reserves, that 10% left is really the government's piggy bank. And I see their piggy bank shriek, shrinking so that they can keep m pumping money into small businesses so they don't start defaulting. I feel like a lot of this is... They don't usually tell us when a thousand people die in China. They don't usually care. They make it yeah. such a big thing out of it. I feel like it's subterfuge <clears throat> to cover a bigger story that their economy is in a free fall. Uh, well, see, the, the only problem with that theory is that this is going to hurt them in a huge way because it's going to be the catalyst. As I said on your show a few months ago and as I first wrote about 10 years ago, 
uh, this is going to be the catalyst for the United States to finally demand that uh, supply chains be made here. So uh, 80 percent of all of the ingredients of your drugs are, are made in China. The, it, it's, it's medical devices, supplies. It's crazy. It's insane. And we finally have a president willing to acknowledge that. So if China rigged this, I don't understand what they would get out of it because it's going to end up uh, having companies withdraw their business from China and start making it here in the United States, uh, which is what is uh, happening right now. Navarro, the trade rep for uh, President Trump, mentioned this in a small article in Politico. Uh, it's not making much news, but uh, my little essay 10 years ago is probably going to uh, become a reality. So it's insane that we're making drugs in China. It's just insane. Yeah, and um, I had Dr. Jeanette Neshwat on last week. She's a, uh, a family and emergency doctor. And she was saying that, uh, you know, we could have shortages in up to like 150 different drugs that we rely yeah. on from China. Yeah. Um, maybe, maybe, unfortunately, the, the positive collateral effect here is we'll spend a lot more money in making some of this stuff and containing our supply chains here in America. And that might be good for stocks. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's going to be good for the economy. That and I wrote the essay in 2010 after the uh, Great Re Depression back then, and there was about a million jobs lost in the tri-state area as all these drug companies exported their their product, their their job manufacturing uh, to overseas. And so it's going to be a flood of high quality jobs back to the United States if we simply require drugs to be manufactured in plants in the United States. Um, and it's not just the shortage issue, it's the quality issue. You cannot trust what is made outside the United States. They rigged the system. The FDA cannot inspect those plants. And there's countless cases of unsafe uh, or even counterfeit drugs. So we've got to bring the supply chain back. It's, it's uh, unacceptable right now. And, and this is going to be the catalyst to do that, I hope. Great. Doc, my final minute here. Um, I pointed out last week that uh, the USMCA that uh, Donald Trump finally got signed, thankfully, with our top two trading partners, Canada, Canada and Mexico, um, opens the door for more production in Canada where we can inspect the plants and we can get more quality control. So is that USMCA and that relationship with Canada one of the things we could do as an alternative here? Well, it's definitely better. In, in physical proximity, the closer the plants, the more easily uh, the FDA can inspect. So can the FDA inspect Canada? Yes. But even if you go as near as uh, Puerto Rico, where J&J &J had a lot of plants, you start to run into problems due to local corruption of the government. So Canada would be almost as good as the United States, but I wouldn't want to start going into Mexico or the Caribbean uh, because then you, you can't inspect those plants due to corruption and there's numerous numerous stories about how J&J &J got in trouble for that. So, um, yeah, yeah, Canada is an option, but it's just just bring them back to the United States. The only reason they went overseas is for pure greed, profit, to skirt the FDA inspections. Um, so. Got it. All right, that's Dr. Stephen Greer. This guy knows the markets. He knows the medical side and uh, quite prophetic on some of the stuff that's happening right now. Doc, thank you so much for joining us on uh, Freaky Friday Liquid Lunch. So uh, still checking out the markets, down about 800 here. Um, some weird stocks are actually popping up in the midst of this. Uh, Foot Locker's up, bookings.com. I don't know who's booking trips. They're certainly not to the Orient. Um, I don't know. Maybe people are buying more sneakers to run away from the coronavirus. But uh, apparently there's some odd stocks that are popping up. And uh, one viewer had suggested to me that uh, Procter & Gamble stock should see a spike here on increased sales of Pepto-Bismol from all the people who are sick to their stomach with what's going on. And it's in the news all around the world right after this.